a journey through time, athletic training in China and Europe. Fascia might seem like a new concept to many, but we are going to journey through time and look at how fascia was viewed in the distant past. Today, let us embark on a fascinating journey through time, exploring the diverse histories of athletic training in China and contrasting them with the athletic training traditions of Europe. From ancient practices to modern methodologies, these histories provide a captivating lens through which we can understand the evolution of athletic training on opposite ends of the globe. Ancient Foundations Our journey begins in the ancient world where physical prowess and combat skills were paramount. In China, the roots of martial arts intertwine with Taoist and Buddhist philosophies, fostering practices that not only enhanced physical capabilities, but also promoted health and meditation. The legendary Shaolin Monastery stands as a testament to China's rich martial heritage, birthing the dynamic and diverse Shaolin Kung Fu. The primary training methods combines physical, mental and spiritual aspects. These methods are deeply rooted in their respective philosophies and traditions. While there can be variations among individual monks and schools, here are some general aspects of the primary training methods for Taoist and Shaolin monks. Qigong is a fundamental practice for Taoist monks. It involves coordinated body movements, breath control, and meditation to cultivate and balance the flow of qi, life energy, in the body. Various forms of Qigong are employed for health, longevity, and spiritual development. Qi is theorized to be transports through Jin Mai, which can be translated to fascia channels, Nagong, encompasses internal exercises aimed at cultivating energy within the body. This may involve static postures, breath control, and visualization techniques. The goal is to enhance physical vitality, mental clarity, and spiritual insight. Again, the training of Nagong is not muscular size, but the internal foundation and control. This would be the earliest form of fascia training. Tai Chi is a martial art that Taoist monks often practice for its health benefits and as a moving meditation. It emphasizes slow flowing movements and precise body alignments, promoting balance, flexibility, and mental focus. Tai Chi is a slow type of form movement, and it is not aim at muscular size increase, but full coordination of the body, another early form of fascia training. Taoist monks engage in various forms of meditation to attain mental clarity, cultivate inner peace, and connect with the Tao Tao. Meditation practices may involve sitting, standing, or moving meditations with a focus on mindfulness and awareness, modernization and codification. As we fast forward to the medieval and renaissance periods, Europe's athletic training landscape differs significantly. Gladiatorial combat in ancient Rome and knightly training in medieval Europe showcased physical prowess but lacked the systematic approaches seen in the East, ancient Greece and Rome. Ancient Greeks placed a high value on physical fitness and training. Gymnasium, a place for physical exercises and education, was an integral part of Greek society. Athletes engaged in activities such as running, wrestling, and discus throwing. Romans, influenced by Greek traditions, also emphasized physical education, incorporating it into their military training. Gladiatorial combat, although more entertainment than sport, involved intense physical preparation. Medieval knight training. In medieval Europe, the training of knights included a focus on combat skills, horseback riding, and the use of weapons. Knights underwent rigorous physical conditioning to prepare for the demands of battle. Renaissance and early modern periods, humanism and physical education, Education. The Renaissance brought about a renewed interest in humanism and physical education became part of a well-rounded education. The emphasis was on overall fitness, incorporating activities such as fencing, archery, and horseback riding. Military training. Military training continued to be a significant influence on athletic preparation. Soldiers engaged in physical exercises and combat training to enhance their effectiveness on the battlefield. Philosophical integration. The philosophies embedded in East Asian martial arts Arts have been central to their development. Taoist principles of balance and harmony, Bushido's code of honor and loyalty, and the interconnectedness of mind and body in Korean martial arts have shaped training methodologies, making them not just physical exercises, but also paths to self-improvement. In Europe, while military training historically emphasized the practical application of skills, the philosophical integration seen in East Asian martial arts was not as pronounced until the advent of modern sports, where concepts of fair play, 
play, teamwork and physical fitness took center stage. 19th century emergence of organized sports. The 19th century saw the emergence of organized sports clubs and competitions, sports like soccer, rugby and cricket gained popularity and these activities laid the foundation for modern team sports. Physical culture movements, the late 19th and early 20th centuries witnessed physical culture movements that promoted exercise for health and well-being. These movements contributed to the development of gymnastics and calisthenics. 20th century professionalization of sports. The 20th century brought increased professionalization of sports. Athletes began to receive specialized training from coaches and sports science started to play a role in optimizing performance. Modern sports science advances in sports science, including exercise physiology, biomechanics and nutrition, became integral to athletic training. Training regimens became more evidence-based and tailored to individual athletes. Strength and conditioning. The emphasis on strength training and conditioning became more pronounced. Athletes started incorporating weightlifting, resistance training and other conditioning methods to enhance performance and reduce the risk of injuries. Integration of technology, the latter part of the 20th century and the 21st century, witnessed the integration of technology into athletic training. Athletes used tools like heart rate monitors, GPS trackers, and video analysis to monitor and optimize their performance. Modern era, interdisciplinary approach. Today, athletic training often involves an interdisciplinary approach. Teams of coaches, physiologists, nutritionists, physical therapists, and sports psychologists collaborate to create comprehensive training programs, specialization and periodization. Athletes follow specialized training programs designed to peak their performance during specific periods known as periodization. This systematic approach helps manage fatigue and optimize training adaptations. Sports specific training. With the growth of various sports, training has become more sport specific. Athletes engage in drills and exercises that mimic the demands of their particular sport. Conclusion. In closing, our journey through the histories of athletic training in China, Europe unveils a tapestry of diversity, philosophy and cultural nuance. From ancient combat on distant battlefields to the modern arenas of global sports, the evolution of athletic training reflects the unique stories of each region. As we continue to explore new frontiers in human performance, may we draw inspiration from the wisdom of the past and the dynamism of the present, forging a collective future of excellence and unity.